Hello and welcome to online worship. Today on Easter, we are so excited that you are tuning in to celebrate the risen Christ with us today. Whether you are on YouTube or Facebook, we want to know you are here. If you can do that by liking this video or leaving a comment down below, even if it's just typing out Happy Easter, we want to know you are here. We want to know you're watching and we want to know that you are worshiping with us today on Easter Sunday. We are so excited to celebrate that Jesus is alive and that new life is born. As spring comes into bloom around us, we are celebrating with creation that new life is here. Next week, we will be starting a brand new sermon series called The Nature of Faith, where we are going to go on a journey together this Easter season as we celebrate creation in humanity, in who we are in the midst of all of God's creation. It is going to be very exciting. We're going to go on some special outings here in online worship and you get to journey while you're safely at your home with us to all of these cool locations. We are so excited about this brand new sermon series, The Nature of Faith. So please join us next week as we launch the series. You truly do not want to miss it. Today is Easter. And we celebrate that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And as we worship, let us start with these words. Jesus, we thought that you were dead. We thought that the cross was the end. We thought that when the stone rolled over the tomb, that was it. But this, in this moment, the dead are living. The cross is empty. The stone is rolled away. And one word can describe it all. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. 
We thought you had said your final word. We thought those with the power had won. We thought that when you cried out, that was it. But this, this is it. The word breathes. The powers are defeated. The final cry was only the beginning. And one word says it all. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. We thought the story was finished. We thought that hope had ended. We thought that when the tomb was sealed, that was it. But this is it. The story has just begun and hope is newly born. The tomb is empty and one word says it all. Alleluia, Jesus is risen. This is the news. Christ is risen. This is the moment. Jesus is alive. This is the gospel. Jesus is with us. We thought that when they crucified you, death had defeated life. And that was it. But this is it. Love is stronger than death. In one word says it all. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Friends, would you celebrate and join us in worship today as we proclaim that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alone in my sorrow Lost without hope, no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested, my life began. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace, so free, washes over me. You have made me new, now life begins with you. Your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. Now life begins with you. Released from my shame, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom, faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace, so free, washes over.
can't really appreciate Easter until we have been to the cross. You can't really comprehend the power of the day unless you have experienced your own darkness, your own pain, your own bite of evil. Unless you have witnessed real brokenness and felt defeat and loss, you can't really grasp the triumph of Easter. So let's journey together from the cross to the open grave. Jesus died at about three o'clock on a Friday afternoon, just three hours before the Passover Sabbath began. And because Jewish regulations pre prevented burial on the Sabbath, they had only a short time to prepare. Joseph of Arimathea, who was on the Sanhedrin, the council of Jewish temple leaders, he was the one that had the courage to go to Pilate and ask for Jesus' body. And he took it and he wrapped it in a funeral shroud and he placed it in his own tomb. Now, archaeologists describe these graves, these tombs, as being carved out of rock with kind of a low entrance. And a large stone would be rolled down a groove in the ground to um, roll across the entrance and to seal it. And then a small rock would be placed there to hold the large round stone in place. It rolled easily down that groove, but it would take several men if you wanted to open the tomb and push that stone back up the hill. The women, they watched the burial. And then everyone went home to grieve and to prepare for the Sabbath. The Bible says nothing about the second day, you know, the day after. But I could imagine the disciples' despair. The Roman soldiers had defeated God's Messiah. And their hopes and their dream and even their faith, it felt like it had been crucified along with him. We will all know the wretchedness of a second day sometime in our lives. It is the day that you are fired or downsized, the day after. The day after your spouse walks out the front door. The day after a miscarriage. The day after you are told that your cancer treatments are no longer working. The day after you lose a sibling to COVID-19. The day after your parent is shot at the office or at the grocery store. That day, we strive for normalcy. We cook, we eat, we clean. But our bodies are filled with a heaviness and despair fills our soul. It is the day when the world seems so dark that hope is nowhere to be found. On the third day, while it was still dark, the women returned to the tomb. That would be Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. Those are the women who had watched Jesus die on the cross. They had watched the body be put in the tomb. And they went there to complete the burial process, to grieve, to show respect, to have some kind of closure. Can you imagine them stumbling along the rocky road in the pre-dawn dim light, kind of picking out the landmarks, trying to remember the way to the tomb, wondering if they would be physically strong enough to move that rock back up and emotionally strong enough to anoint the body with the funeral spices. But when they arrived, the stone had already been removed and the grave was open. Going to the tomb, they saw a young man in there dressed completely in white, sitting to the right of where the body was supposed to be. 
And like all of God's messengers, the first thing he said was, do not be afraid. And like all people who encounter the angelic, they were amazed, astonished. They were afraid. The young man who knew that they expected to find the crucified body of Jesus said, he isn't here. He's been raised. And he instructed them to go and tell the disciples, especially Peter, that Jesus had already gone ahead to Galilee. He said he would find them there, exactly as Jesus had foretold. Now, faced with the naked power of God who moves huge stone and raises the dead, they did what most regular people would do. They ran! They didn't just meander home in some kind of wonder. They exploded out of that tomb, wide-eyed and trembling, with feet slapping the sand as fast as they could go. This is the final image that Mark offers us, one of fear and amazement and motion. If Mark's gospel were turned into a movie, it would not have a nice tidy ending as the other gospels have, with Jesus breaking bread in an inn on the way to Emmaus, or eating fish in an upper room, or around a campfire at a beach. There'd be no happy conclusion before the words, the end, appeared on the screen and the credits scrolled. No. The end of Mark's movie would be more like a dreaded last episode of your favorite TV series. The season finale begins and one of the favorite characters has been in a horrible accident and all of his friends have gathered in the hospital in the waiting room and the doors to the operating room open and the surgeon, exhausted, comes out to bring them the news and they all look at her expectantly. And then the screen would go dark and the words to be continued would be flashed there. To be continued, really? The empty tomb and the message he is going ahead to Galilee presents followers a challenge. If the tomb is empty, and Jesus is raised, then the dream is not dead. The reign of God is closer than one would think, and the mission is not complete, and the work needs to continue. Jesus is loose in the world. The women didn't just sit down and have a cup of coffee and meditate on that. They didn't form a United Methodist committee to come up with plan B. No, they ran. They got a move on. The ending sends followers back to Galilee where Jesus first told the good news and where he first called the disciples into action. The story continues. God didn't roll away the stone so that Jesus could get out but so that we could get in and see that the tomb was empty and that he had gone ahead to begin something new. In the middle of our darkest, most frightening days, we will be directed to new beginnings. We will find hope in the community of believers, our congregation, our church. As writer Melissa Bain Sevier notices, once the tomb has been opened, there is no telling where the story might go from there. There is no stopping the places where Jesus might show up, like in your kitchen, or in the middle of an argument, or in your office, or in the unemployment office, or in a hospital, in the NICU, or the COVID ward or in a funeral home. Fear doesn't have to be the last word. Although they were afraid, are the last words 
of Mark's gospel story. They are not the end of God's story or the end of the women's story or the end of the disciples' story or the end of your story or my story. The story of resurrection is not told by standing and staring into a tomb. It is to be lived by turning and running headlong back into life. God places in our bodies and souls the promise of resurrection, the promise of Easter, the promise of new life in every encounter with new people and new situations or old familiar people and situations. It is living in the hope that the dark tomb is not God's final message to us. Every day that you decide to live your life in faith instead of fear, you are writing a postscript for this gospel. Every day that you share God's love with other human beings, you are continuing the Jesus story. Mark's gospel doesn't have a simple happy ever after ending. It stops expectantly, and we are left wanting more. We are given the surprise of a rock rolled away and an empty tomb, and the challenge of new beginnings and the hope drawn from a community of believers. Let's just burst out of that tomb and go. Let's run towards a new day, towards a future. Yes, it's shrouded in mystery, but it carries the promise of resurrection. And then the words were a scroll on the screen of God's story, of your story and my story, to be continued. Amen. Let's begin with a prayer 
of confession. God, resurrection is not what we expect it to be. On the face of things, life seems to be under threat. The earth is grieving, our families are fracturing, our nations are at war, and the light of our hope is growing dim. We need the stone to be rolled away again. Forgive us and all who fail to honor the diversity and glory that is among us. Forgive us and all who have allowed relationships to become less important than riches and recognition. Forgive us and all who continue to exalt our own needs and our own desire over those of others and are willing to kill to prove it. Forgive us and all who have grown blind to the signs of resurrection that are all around us. We need that stone to be rolled away again. We need love to consume us again. We need life to break out within us again. Resurrect us today, O oh Lord, and make us agents of your life and love wherever dying and grief hold us sway for jesus sake amen. amen now would you join us as we pray the prayer that jesus taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's celebrate this irresistible life. Let's open our hearts to the joy and wonder of infinite possibility, of unquenchable hope and eternal resurrection. We celebrate, we raise our voices and our hearts in worship and thanksgiving to the God who lives. Resurrection has happened because Christ was first prepared to die. Defying death, he refused to loosen his grip on life and love. And so now, as he encouraged us, we choose to remember so that we too can truly live. Jesus gathered together on the night before he died with his closest followers. And at supper, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, broken so that you may know life. Eat it and remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the wine and he blessed it. Then he gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my blood shed for you so that you may know life. Drink it and remember me. And so now, Lord of life, we share in this meal, we celebrate together, and we remember you. And we will continue to do this until resurrection has flooded the whole creation. Amen. Amen. May this bread and this wine become for us in this moment your life-giving body and blood. And may we who share this meal be joined with you and joined with each other as one body in resurrection life and sharing with all of creation your eternal salvation. Amen. Amen. As we break this bread, we receive Christ's life in all of our diversity and in all of our individuality 
As we share this one loaf, we are one. You may now eat and drink in your home. We've come to the point in our time together today on Easter Sunday, where we pray. Where we pray for each other, where we pray for our community, and when we pray for our world. You have the opportunity throughout the week to submit your prayer requests. We truly want to be praying for you. Even when we can't see your face and we're worshiping online, we want to be connected and grounded in prayer as a community of faith. So you can submit your prayer requests on our church website at dumc.net slash prayer. You can also send in your prayer requests anytime to our church office through Facebook Messenger or email. We truly just want to make it easy for you to submit your prayer requests so that we can be supporting you in prayer. Friends, would you pray with me today? Heavenly Father, in the joy and hope of this Easter morning, we sing Alleluia with the fullness of our hearts. Christ is risen. Love is stronger than death. Alleluia. In the joy and hope of this Easter morning, in the midst of our singing and shouting, we know that there are still those who are bewildered and sad. Today we pray for those that have no hope, for those who suffer from depression, loneliness, and fear. Risen Christ, we pray for those places and peoples in our world where death and domination rule, where imperial powers ignore the poor, 
where war is endless and children are hungry, where parents grieve because they cannot provide, where accidents happen and death abounds senselessly. We pray, God, we pray for those situations. We pray for those in addiction and chronic illness, those in pain, those recovering. In the hope and joy of this Easter morning, we realize the depth and breadth of what it means to be your Easter people. For we are the ones who are called, called to go into the world and in the lives of the world and to work for justice and life for all of your creation. It is up to us to bear the witness to the promise of the resurrection, to hold those in despair and believe for them that love is stronger than death. In the joy and hope of this Easter morning, O oh God, give us the courage to bear your living love in every corner of our lives so that your presence will be here on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Alleluia and amen. Friends, today we proclaim that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Go out into the world and share the love of Christ with all you meet. Go in grace and go with God. Be blessed and happy Easter.